you're in a oh, bad should we place. Go, should we go to a, to a gun range for my birthday? Yeah, to shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> to go protest it. <laughs> yeah, to go take videos and call them murderers. <laughs> Welcome to Joy Tactics, the podcast dedicated to all things joyful, joyous, and meeting as many celebrities as humanly possible. Hosted by Eric Rahill, Nate Veroni, and Jack Bensinger. Enjoy. Okay, well, before we get into this episode, Jack, you have something to plug, right? We have some, uh, we have some live entertainment, Joy Tactics, yeah. or, uh, Jack, Jack Benzinger, uh stand-up productions, entertainment. If you live in Los Angeles, will somebody do like a little beat behind this, actually? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Eric. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. Los Angeles. <laughs> if you live in that area, get your kids, get your wife, and don't hide, hide your kids, unhide your kids, unhide your wife, and put them in the sedan, and come to... <laughs> My comedy show at the Lyric Hyperion, Los Angeles. What is it? October 25th at the Lyric Hyperion. Uh, it's called So What's Funny Is. And yet what's not funny is that you're going to that. Um, wow. Yeah, so get your tickets right I can do. the fuck Hyperbolic now. Hyperions. Hydrate Link my in the show hot. notes. The Lyrical Perion. Um, um, yeah, that's gonna be yeah. fucking. You know what? That show is gonna be the opposite of, at least for the, the audience Holocaust. members. I <laughs> burn <Sorry>. in. <laughs> oh, very good. <laughs> to tie it into today's episode, everybody, we are discussing burdens of all shapes and sizes, uh, and what that means. What What is a burden, Nate? What is a burden? A burden is, I would say, if I could if I could transform it into a sort of physical metaphor, it's like a heavy backpack that you don't want on. Wow. You never even wanted that ba- backpack on in the first place. You just want to walk outside and yeah. walk that through the neighborhood, but you got this heavy backpack on mm-hmm. that you don't, and I said this before, but I'm going to say it again, but you don't want the backpack on your back, and it's full of heavy cement rocks you can barely you can well, barely you're slugging it around you guys remember this you guys what? remember this in chicago what i used to i used to do a bit where i'd put about a mm-hmm. 35 pound rock in a backpack um <laughs> in your xbox 360 backpack that's true um <laughs> it had a big large opening in the side yeah so that's interesting to hear so you really lived lived it i really, really lived it man burden. and i felt because i did it as a bit the bit was like these kids underage children are drinking alcohol something that's not funny but on stage we reflect society back and then i co- would come on mm-hmm. with this heavy backpack and they'd go what the fuck is that that's you know we don't want you to hang mm-hmm. out with us so yes it was comedy but yes it was an it, it, it really was an exploration in burdicious uh happenstances you know that reminds me of a bit that you also used to do called the tape clothesmans and this was a bit where it was a family that would just instead of wearing clothes tape tape the clothes just to to the front of their body so the back was all nude and we would do this (laughs) at uh the sketch of holy fuck that we were in and there's a picture of it i saw recently and I've gone through some body transformations <laughs> since 2017 when probably that t- photo was taken. And I, I, I couldn't believe how little my ass was. I had a, and I still, I think I, we've talked about it. I still have a small ass for my frame, but, um, right. For a I bug was, frame. Though. Yeah. Well, yeah, for a bug, this would be literally a nightmare Life-ending. to be carrying this thing around. That'd be yeah. a deformity, <laughs> but <laughs> I just, yeah, I just remembered that. Okay, so the... I have, a, I have a question, Jack, but before we move on, about with the Xbox 360 cement backpack, when you were kind of walking either to or from the theater, would you feel like a little extra safe knowing that you could just like take that off and whack somebody with it, you know? Well, I would, but that's the that rock was a door stopper in the Annoyance Theater, and I bet it's still there. That was a big rock. That was a big ass rock. Yeah. I wish I had that level of leg strength, but I don't think I could have done that. 
So the Oxford Dictionary definition of a burden is a load. Yeah. Typically a heavy one. Oh. Oops. Oops. Whoops. <laughs> a heavy load. <sighs> Don't mind if I do. You ever weigh <laughs> your load on like a scale? <laughs> <laughs> uh, unfortunately, that's what, yeah. that's what that dirty evokes. Dang. You dirty biatch. Right. Is Miriam uh, a, a chick? Miriam mm, Webster? Good question. Imagine <laughs> imagine a, a dictionary come to life as a sexy librarian. You give it life, and it's the hottest librarian of all time. Dude, you know who's been flirting with me is these chicks uh, in... Uh, these swimmer chicks in uh, Pokemon Sapphire, the Game Boy game. Oh, I'm just swimming around. I'm just too, trying to don't, don't, get away from me. I'm just going yeah, looking for I'm some ice type. I'm trying to get a Gyarados. I'm trying to right. get a Gyarados. And then they mm-hmm. go, excuse me, do you want to play with me in my uh, uh, heart discs, mm-hmm. whatever they're called? Bikini? No. Oh, right. Yeah. But they're quite suggestive sometimes. These, uh, <laughs> that's true type these water type um yo speaking i was start standing outside of barney's beanery on friday night with some friends hmm. and i'm just standing there and these two women walk past me and they're dressed all crazy and one of them I, did i tell you about this last night nate no. One of them fully rubs her hand up my arm onto my chest. Oh! I, and I couldn't believe it. And then she, and then she just walked to her Uber Black. It was a black SUV, windows tinted. She didn't give you like a com- come here, or no, was no, it just like a flirtatious? So and I, touch. immediately I thought I was being pickpocketed, because I, <laughs> you know what I mean. And I checked to make mm-hmm. sure the watch, the Seiko watch was still there, wallet still intact, over twenty dollars in that shit, phone. <laughs> In my pocket, I just feel like this LA glow is making me irresistible. Oh, <laughs> that's a scary instance. Mm-hmm. I'm, you know, that may, that may, LA is falling apart. It's falling into mayhem. It's falling into Sodom, Kingdom of Sodom. Sodomia. Yeah, um, because you know it's a society with rules, rules which I like and which make for a positive experience. Mm-hmm. That would not be happening. Not even close. Mm. Uh, you you wouldn't want to be touched. No, especially not. Because a life without down. touch. I've but told you guys so about sacred. my Jesuit uh, English teacher. Well, let me tell you this. Yeah. You know about the Jesuit priests, right? And priests in general. No. What's the difference? Many of Catholic priests. Well, we know th- some of them have been doing horrible, evil, naughty, beyond naughty things. Evil the minority. Things. The minority. But yeah. Well, we don't know. But anyways. This guy, uh, he may have been closeted. I don't know. It was about 2010 when it happened. But he was a very sweet English Jesuit teacher, okay, professor. And on the last day of class, he read us a poem that he wrote. We were studying poetry in the wow. class. And then he wrote a, read us a poem that he wrote. And it's about his weekly ritual of going to the barber and how the barber is the only place that he's touched where he experiences touch from someone that he has gotten to know and love because he's been seeing this barber for, you know, 10, 15 years and how intimate that touch is, just like someone taking care of you and the, and, the, and how you feel held. Uh, and it, dude, we were all like watching this fucking crying. So if you're saying you want to take touch away from us, I'm going to have to stop no you No one's right saying there. that. <laughs> no one's one saying that, that you no, cannot no, touch I'm anymore. I'm gonna have to stop you right there. There are certain <laughs> types of touch, touch that remains. Twitter makes me look at certain types of touching where it ends somebody's life almost every day. When I log, when it's the second I open that fucking app, that is a type of touch. Not all touch is made the same. Mm. What matters is delicacy, pressure, surface area, precision. There are many factors of touch which can transform. Remember that word? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just I just fucking learned about that word. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they can transform it into mo- <laughs> positive or negative. Wow. Eric learned that from the drop-down menu in Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so I mean, so yeah, burdens. What I mean, we, we us three, we might look like we're standing tall. We might look like we have good posture metaphorically, but we each have, I would say, what they call Sisyphus's whatever crazy rock ball. At least a couple of those hanging from our bodies. <laughs> you know what I mean? I definitely know what you mean. I don't. You think when Sisyphus had them rocks tied to him, every time he fell down the hill. Mm-hmm. Tie one more rock on him. Mm. Just got harder and harder. Yeah, Let's I go through. Ro- I think people romanticize our lives a little bit. Oh, of course. The struggle. I think not. we just need to. I think we need to just like make this clear to everybody that you would never want to step one for one mm-hmm. second. I in, in any one of our brains. Or bodies. I don't think I don't think people are strong enough to no, handle no. that type of mental torture and pain that that would come with that. Mm-hmm. It's hell and on earth. Yeah. Okay, mm. so I know when you see us out and about, you see all of our stories, all the sexy photos that we post to be mm-hmm. uh, celebrities are and, beginning to meet. By the way, mm-hmm. we we're not talking about all the celebrities we meet because we like to be sort of salt of the earth and stay relatable to the listeners, but. If they it's knew getting, it's some getting of the more slur- difficult. It's, it's gonna it's get di- because every week we're coming on here, we have to talk about this, and it's like every day we're basically yeah. chilling with all these popping people, and it's right. like, what are we going? So that's why we're talking about fucking uh, burgers on the episode. Right. That's why the the topics are so <laughs> right. Once I mean, yeah, I don't know. I'm tired of hiding all this shit, hiding how successful we are. You know what I'm saying? Because that's a burden too. The burden of trying burden, to seem dude. average uh, in the face of what in reality is is me chilling with people like Anthony Bourdain. Y'all think he's gone? People mm-hmm. who aren't in the cool kids club, we know where he is. Meanwhile, like this is this Puerto shit. Rico. This is a set. I don't even. I, we're on the UAE right, right now. <laughs> yeah. We've been here forever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's exhausting. I feel like I'm looking into reality from like like yeah uh, from a little window. I bet a he'd really be small a speakeasy <laughs> in the UAE. Bourdain. Yeah, the uh, speak easy. <laughs> well, they in need the it because it's a dry town. But it isn't really dry, is it? <laughs> dry as the desert. I mean, people actually Bless drink you. there, right? Excuse me. What's the I point mean, of Dubai if it's not fucking? Anyway, so so Can yeah, each of Dubai? us have the burden. Each of us have the burden of extreme success and sort of balancing that in like. And families extreme that mental are each begging us for me- money. Oh yeah, my, there's mental demons in us. That's for sure. Anxiety, depression. Never had that but one we, specifically. But, but we've I, we have learned how to use the. So uh, the, I would say most of the population, when they're anxious or depressed, they really feel the effects of those illnesses, right? But yeah. whereas we are able to do this thing called transmutation, which is different than transformation. And we were able to transmute that into creativity, into writing, drawings, to social skills, mostly. Bro, once my drawings fucking come (laughs) out. (laughs) Oh, oopsie daisy. That's going to be it. Once you Mm -hmm. see what Eric's been cooking in terms of muscular reindeers, looking at little lollipops (laughs) and stuff. Yeah. Oh, it's like a color paper, yeah. but it's, yeah, right. you're, you're drawing in like uh, on uh, with colored pencils. No, mostly I'm just drawing caricatures of ex presidents and <laughs> <laughs> sort of exposing them for what they've actually did. You know what I mean? Right. What they did, what they didn't want to be known for: war crimes and being racist and such. That's what Which I'm exposing them. Why not? For oh. why don't you drop your political cartoons, man? This is like the time right I'm gonna, now during this election fucking, cycle. Once my fucking bunker is built and I can escape to that shit, yeah, I'm going to drop them, but I'm going to be fucking gone like a ghost because once that shit drops, <laughs> I'm going to be hunted by many agencies. <laughs> it's just I like just Donald so Trump true. swimming in like a pool of mm-hmm. coins. Like it's yeah, so yeah, like surface level. Like, uh, the truth Scrooge is duck, this one was like about duck. greed. Swimming thought- in a pool of coins. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about wealth as burden wait I have to comment on Donald Trump 
I, I don't know that we broke him down fully. I know we got him out of office, but we didn't get him out of. We didn't, that's not full justice. Um, because remember how he had small hands. Remember this. Who Trump? Yeah, him? how could you Donald forget? Trump? They yeah. said that his hands were small. But what's funny is, <laughs> I wonder if they were trying to, if his hands were so small because he didn't want us to see that he was red-handed. It's because they were red. Everybody thinks they were orange, but they were actually red. From caught the red-handed, blood? trying to steal with the guilt. Yep, with a little the integrity of America. The integrity of America. The because before of, his ass, we we ran this shit right. We ran mm-hmm. this shit c- correctly, morally. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you can see, that was irony because actually, before Trump, this country's been corrupt since day motherfucking one, dude. If you don't know that, read a book or read some of my essays I wrote about it. We <laughs> yeah. America's are not on its innocent. last legs. America is mm-hmm. about to is in divorce court, and it's 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 has a domestic partnership with truth and reality checks, and that shit's about to yeah. bounce. And we are the kids, and we are about to get adopted by hell and Satan. And fire is about to rain down on us like a motherfucking hurricane, flaming hurricane Katrina. Rainstorm, something like that. Yeah, fire NATO. Mm-hmm. This shirt. And by that the I'm way, wearing, you bring up hurricanes. Oh, God oh, bless North go Carolina ahead. right now. Seriously, sending God bless uh, blessings to them from God. Shout out to Whole Donuts. That. Whole Donuts in Asheville. That's one institution that. We're helping. I've Working never on. been to Asheville. Um, it's a mountainous town in northwest North Carolina. They have a wonderful tourist tourism economy, as well as thriving uh, local stores and universities. That's not all North that, Carolina has to offer. That feels like a town where you just, you got like a bunch of tattoos. You're in your 40s. You work in carpentry, you know, and you have a, you married your high school sweetheart. Mm-hmm. Your kids aren't fucked up. They're well behaved. They go to school. They go to the, they, they're, they have a good group of friends. And you, yeah, you do get a little too drunk from time to time. And maybe it's starting to become an issue. But overall, but you, you still have, have good fun. Life. But you still have Dude. fun, and like that. What's the what? You know, it, you live in Asheville. You can't really go to the to New York City every fucking week. So, um, that just feels like see, that feels see, like a, a that nice is vibe. freedom. Yeah, that is a life absent of burden. Of course, everyone has the burden of con- consciousness. Itself is a burden that we have <laughs> the- been for. That's been forced on us. But I th- back to us, sort of, I think people look at our coastal lives and see all these TV shows that we get to be a part of and all these wonderful parties that we get to go to and think, oh, well, they don't know burdens at all. But actually, it's a burden to have a passion like this. You see what I'm saying? I'd like to be in Asheville. Well, not right. I'd like to be there helping right now if I could. But I'd like to live somewhere like that, you know, in my mid-40s, eating bacon, Wearing my Deathly Hallows tattoo, you know what I mean? Not knowing about the transphobia stuff that J.K. Rowling did, just in a little bit of ignorant bliss. You see what I'm saying? Right. What you're saying is that people who live Tuesdays. outside of the uh, coastal cities, they're calling us elitists almost as a defense mechanism because they're afraid That's to right. go and take responsibility for this country and move to the places where yep. you really do have to keep this shit running, man. We can't. Sorry, we can't all just go. Like live on vaca- in vacation check mode out. for our yeah. whole lives out in Des Moines, Iowa or somewhere like that. No, we yeah. have to take life seriously. And we have to shape culture. And we have to <laughs> get... And shift it. Kamala we Harris have to do improv shows culture. for 12 years. Right. And we yeah. have to... Yeah. God. Am I wearing a Kamala Harris shirt right now? No. No. Brat was co-opted by the Kamala Harris Dem- Democrat machine. Um, well... So Noah, <laughs> who I just had met in Minneapolis, mm-hmm. that gave me this shirt. He said somebody made this shirt, and there was an extra. 
But I think this is maybe a Kamala shirt. I can't quite tell. Maybe it is. Because isn't maybe she kind of work for it? Uh, not anymore. Now it's a... Can I talk mm. some shit about the Democratic Party real quick? Just, be careful. I, be I just, very careful. I am careful because I've learned Which, my lesson from previous statements. If you're about to go off on Ilhan. The mob comes after me. I just want to get rid of what I would call the McDonald's corporate optimism of the Democratic Party. I think there is the music that's being played at these rallies the conventions the the mm-hmm. everyone's smiling because mm-hmm. this doesn't mm-hmm. reflect how we're feeling in the world this doesn't reflect how we are feeling day-to-day americans struggling to buy groceries uh, making minimum wage barely getting by check to check we're not listening to fucking imagine dragons and and smiling all day okay i need some darkness within the democratic party and yeah i'm gonna be rocking with the Democratic Party till the the rest for the rest of my life, no matter what what happens. Okay, I have no other choice. We're in a two party system. I have no fucking choice but to to vote this way. Right. But I just want to say, can we get a little bit of realness, a little bit of darkness? Who do you want just, in there, Jelly Roll? <laughs> Hell no, dude. <laughs> Jelly Roll is exactly what I'm talking about. Perfect example. Yeah. I mean, yes, he does have some darkness, but he's the 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 front facing like facade that he puts on is very McDonald's. Do you know what I'm talking about when I say McDonald's? Like you're in McDonald's and you hear hear the cheery music mm-hmm. and but you're you're eating the shittiest food on the on earth. And yeah, sorry I said that. It's delicious, but you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so Nate, if you are... All right, they come to you, they go, Nate, you got a blank fucking check. You got whatever. Maybe you, you can smoke cigarettes for a week and it's not going to make you addicted. Something, whatever. <laughs> but what they're saying is <laughs> you can, you are the fucking director of the DNC this year. Who's running? Okay. How are they going to behave? What food are we going to have? What music are we going to have? What shoes? What's the dress code? Like, how are you going to capture America and return them to the Democratic Party? That's a great fucking question, Jack. Because what I'm well, saying is that the reason I'm saying that for is a lot of people talk shit, but they don't have answers. Okay. And it's very easy to criticize. Well, hold on. I'm just thinking, dude, I have many, I have too many answers is the, is the problem. <laughs> okay. One, I'll give you one right here. You All know right. when you see that Teacher of the Year award? Let's get one of those fucking people in office. Oh. You see a yeah. Teacher of the Year? That's a good person. Cause they're, well, you know, they're Tim bringing Walls, so much. the badass, was a teacher. He was a badass. You know, was he a Teacher of the Year? Did he win a Teacher of the I Year award? I don't know. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't verified did. that. I gave him that. I gave him one. Because you ever meet a Teacher of the Year, they really are like... So I feel like those are the people that should be. We should have teachers of the year. Just that should be all Congress, all of. <laughs> You're every losing my vote, there, dude. Did. I don't got. I don't get in good with <laughs> teachers. I feel like the teacher of the year is the person who's fucking stealing my tech deck and making me uh, <laughs> go to special ed math in fourth grade. Okay. No, they're not like the militant ones, dude. The teachers of the years are like the the teacher that everyone loves. They don't even care about the schooling that much. It's just like they're yeah. kind of there to be friends with the students okay. a little bit. So the candidate is not a politician. It's just one of the homies. No. That's how we no set it up No politicians. We're done with politicians. But it's like uh, jury on the flip duty. side, we don't, we don't want, yes, exactly. We don't want a, a Donald Trump type billionaire. You can't be a billionaire. You can't be a politician. That's those are the so what's what, I, the big I, thing is the yeah I have an idea I have an idea is it funny make uh, no it's not funny it's real I don't ever right. say something because it's funny I say something because it's true that's what I'm checking real. that's why I'm trying to make sure that you keep it on fucking <laughs> keep it on the fucking point I it's, think it's we shit. need to bring coffee breath and fucking back. yo play yogurt back to politics make that shit boring <laughs> again you know what i mean bring back the 1990s sort of fluorescent lights to politics is this making sense because that's what joe biden was man he was an argument no for he's decorum. a little too fresh breath uh, no no i mean i think he was oh, a little too smooth with it I see he was a saying. little too he had the veneers I mean, 
It's Bernie Tate Sanders pop music has that out a little bit. Oh, Bernie Sanders definitely does. White His shirt stank. slacks. Oh, it definitely stanks. And as it should, because he's up late trying to fix the country. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, I do. And I, I do. think actually back in the day, they used to weaponize uh, boringness for politics. Because you turn it on the TV, at C-SPAN, it's so boring. Shh, 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 like that. But actually what they're voting on is how many different people from foreign countries to kill with a bomb. Do you see what, <laughs> what I'm saying? Talking about? What are you talking about? What are That's you talking about? a great point. I'm saying no, that no, in we've the never past, done that. bureaucracy was weaponized as... Uh, but the boringness is get rid of the charm yeah no no more charming people no more charm you can't be charming you have to be the most awkward fucking socially loser uh just you have no idea how to talk to media how to how to get across your points honestly i feel like i should be a politician i kind of don't get instagrams you don't get an instagram you don't get to go to any music festivals not not to keep rocking with biden like this joe burden anti the anti-burden wow i call them (laughs) <laughs> but this is listen we would, I don't think we know what we squandered because he fucking he spoke like a real person everybody else is up there and it's like a fucking wind up doll and pulling their fucking thing and they're saying well we need to do this in Ukraine and I'm thinking remember when Biden would get up there and he would say the wrong thing you'd ask him <laughs> something about foreign policy and he'd start talking about this mm-hmm. and that that's what I feel like when I'm talking almost all the time and what did we do? Right, we scorned right. him because we scorned him because he was showing us the mirror, I, and we didn't like what we saw. Language is your burden. <laughs> and can I say another burden? <laughs> a topic of burden. <laughs> what? Knowledge. I think we oh, all suffer from that. Oh, it's power. Having horse. so much knowledge of the political system and knowing behind the scenes of what's really going on, that might be the most torturous burden of all. Knowledge is power, and what is power? Responsibility. And yeah. let's, can we see how far we can go with this? Yeah. Let's go. And what is, what is responsibility? Is and what is power? What is, yeah. With great and responsibility. responsibility with great power becomes comes great power. Uh, comes great responsibility. Wait, which way does it? Okay, with but then great power that? comes great responsibility. That's from Spider Man. Joy tactics. Okay, and then great passability. <laughs> great responsibility. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I want to keep going here. Great responsibility <laughs> comes great attractiveness I, because people have responsibilities. You know, you see sexy fireman. So then great attractiveness. Then I didn't eat enough today. You know, I, I think had we got what I had today at Papa John's. I had a leftover oh boy. from night Yeah. Oh, that you know, was, tell me that. Dude, I was, I, I think I've been a hater of Papa John's for close to, I would say, eight years and i feel like that papa john's pie whatever i just want to give a shout out to that specific location dude nate nate do you know which location it was because we got to give them a shout because the they park were put one. the highland but, park papa john's but nate if you're working there right now and you and you and you put together that pie those couple pies last night i know a lot of people don't see you and they don't give you the compliments and the respect mm-hmm. that you deserve but you, you really put thank it call the fuck them. down. I know you. That shit was I, I made think with you, love. You should thank call we them, should man. Th- we should fucking thank call them. We should. We should. We will. We will. We'll do it live. Fuck it. We oh, should do Nate, a 12 hour thankathon. Make... The naked thankathon? <laughs> Nate, I want. <laughs> Nate. Now is the time to make Jack a little jealous of how amazing life in L.A. is, man. Why don't you give him a little taste of what last night was like at my career? Okay, yeah, sure. Um, well, it started off with, <laughs> let's just say, there was Madre Mezcal on Oops. the counter. Oops. The counter, the kitchen island. We're all chilling mm-hmm. at the island. What's in the center? Madre Mezcal. What's mm-hmm. next to that? A big bowl of chips. Mm -hmm. What kinds of chips? Doritos, Mm -hmm. potato chips, plain. What kind of chips? And what's next to them? Candy. And what's in the drawer? (laughs) A three millies in Mm -hmm. for the for the function, not anybody's personal. For the fellas only. For just the fellas, women wanted it, but we said Kate did try one, and she got sick. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) And then, well. Eric comes in with the three 
boxes extra large PJs, extra large one cheese one uh pepperoni and jalapeno mm-hmm. and one uh i think kind of veggie style mm-hmm. and then Th- these are the type of parties that you don't get in the midwest you don't yeah. get it like this candy and chips and pizza what did we play that game uh Oops. we played a drinking game where King's everybody Cup. was getting fucking <laughs> faded <laughs> nobody was getting King's faded Cup. Nobody got even mildly faded. It was like people. And was, then like, we went out back and smoked low THC joints mm-hmm. and talked shit about talk everybody we know. Shit about everyone that we love. <laughs> Do you want to know why I'm not jealous? Why, man? <laughs> My reptile brain is jealous. My reptile brain that just wants sugar and wants a belly rub. But my <laughs> human brain that God mm-hmm. gave me mm-hmm. knows that I am growing rapidly by having zero friends in New York City, spending all of my time in the gym, <laughs> spending all of my time writing extremely hard completely by myself, accepting no help, not socializing, doing one show a month. And <laughs> basically when we're 45 and I step out of the hyperbolic mm-hmm. chamber that is New York City and I do finally visit LA for the first time <laughs> you guys are gonna see me I'm basically gonna fly there on a fucking Rolex Airlines you see what I'm saying oh so shit Rolex the, Airlines yeah oh. I didn't even want to tell you but yeah they want me to be an influencer they want me to be a brand guy it's Con style so <laughs> doing Con for an airline where they like fly you really really far and you're getting like yeah whatever that's something interesting to think about (laughs) but but what i'm saying is just wait let's say that i'm showing up to la october eh, maybe 22nd i don't care i'll buy the plane ticket day of because that's how i roll now money wise um and you guys are going to be shocked i'm going to have my two pack is going to be starting to come back right below my breasts and (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> damn i definitely have breasts right now i definitely got them right now <laughs> what's everybody's bench press right now say it 225 i'll start bench. i'll start all right i'll start wagon wheels 135 two of them or not uh, two of them on each side but oh, two of them total one on each damn. that's all right. all right and then how many reps nate well, I'm doing well. I didn't even I didn't even finish the weight that I'm putting on. Oh it. my bad! And then I'm putting on two tens on each side. One fifty, and I'm rapidly getting to the twenty fives. Mm. Dude, the twenty fives are when you feel like it just looks, looks. good. You know I know what I mean? that it's all. That's what. That's all I care about. I can't be the person yeah. with one. Oh, dude, that's why I use on. fucking. The, that's right. why I, you feel. You got to come to my gym. We got the one oh, pound the wagon wheels at my gym. That's when you get the. <laughs> you got the forty foot wide barbell. Looking um, like uh, Goku. Damn, I can't wait. You are. You are. Last night, Nate. You were. I was like, you're glowing. Something's up. The exercise hitting. Just, what is it? I don't know. Is there a vibrational you, shift? You know, muscle really changes everything. A little muscle makes you feel so fucking good. Even if the rest of your health ain't quite right, if you got a little layer of muscle in there, that that's what makes you feel fucking I powerful. I do feel, I have this feeling that since I've been working on weight training more that I could just throw somebody against the wall. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if I mm-hmm. could do that, but if somebody kind of like was like fucking with me in that way, mm-hmm. in my head, I feel like th- with the amount of bicep curls that I can do now, I'm doing 35 bicep curls. There's no way I can't. Somebody starts to fuck with me, shove me or something like that. Their ass is getting thrown into drywall. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And they're going to make a dent too from a, from a far away. But you should get a weapon. Pick them up. You should. Yeah. Not, don't rely. <laughs> I, don't I, mean, I hear one. what you're saying, but you probably need a weapon. I don't need one. <laughs> yeah, why won't you pack? I'm putting up 35s really on, the, on the bicep. Oh, shit. So you could pull, you might not be able to throw them into a wall, but you could pull them into you really quickly. See what I'm saying? Grab them by the shirt and then just do one of these, you know, from a far away too. I'm saying like 30 feet and they go fucking into a drywall, into the wall. Nate, 
when I'm in LA, let's let me let me teach you the Osotogari. You're gonna like that. Something tells me that I like the sound of that. I don't know what it is, but something you're gonna like the that. you're gonna like the Osotogari. Trust me. If you don't know what that is, you're in a oh, bad should we place. Go, should we go to a, to a gun range for my birthday? Yeah, to shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> to go protest it <laughs> yeah to go take videos and call them murderers <laughs> uh, we mean, all get fucking yeah. capped immediately hello excuse us Uh-oh. a Chris Kyle style cap what was I gonna say what are we What are we even talking about right now where are we at burdens, burdens. I don't know but I'm happy oh, well, to hear about your I weightlifting disc- journey well, let me switch it up real quick. I was getting up at, this was like last week. I I got up at 5 a.m. for like four days in a row and was trying to like, I'm, I was trying to become a morning person, just switching it up like that. And I was going for like a run at like 5, you know, 5.30 a.m. And who do I see out and about? Parnell. A, no. Wait, that's just, what I was thinking. What'd you say? Chris Parnell. Is that the guy? Who's that? From it. Well, he's from SNL. Dude, Eric, I don't Were mean to make it weird Parnell? right now. I don't mean to make it weird right now, but that's who I was thinking of. You're kidding. That's I crazy. was going to say, well, he snack attack, live, motherfucker. He no way. I swear to God, that's, that's what I was going to say. Wild. Dude, this is so well, fun. I've taken, this is so fun. I've taken some busted paparazzi <laughs> pics of him, and he does live very close to me. He okay. Close. But no, I did not that's see Chris why. Parnell. Who did I see? A disproportionate amount of bald men getting it in mm. Mm. in the mm. am lots of the bald demons. guys they're sprinting. hiding their shame <laughs> they're well they're hiding That's from the uv burden. rays oh, i'm just right. saying bald guys just have like a different sort of energy vortex inside of them <laughs> where they, they got nothing up. less to, left to lose yeah we've all the follicles have jump ship we have we have fucking nothing dude we have nothing dude we have to get up we need a couple more hours in the day to make up for, you know, what we lack fo- in the fall mm-hmm. in, to get uh, revenge fo- follicularly. Follicular so shout out to all the bald guys getting up early. David Goggins, yeah, you too, bud. Yeah, name one person with a great head of hair and a work ethic. Every time I see some Fabio-looking person, nah, that's all surgery. When I'm walking around and I'm walking through some pathetic ass workplace. <laughs> What's the most loser ass place to work? Oh, dude, the White House. Well, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That. <laughs> yeah, some White House. Uh, maybe the White House gift shop. <laughs> Teehee. These people. You see somebody with really long hair. What I'm implying is that they're lazy. Ah. Right. Well, if you want to level your shit up, go. Uh, just, just, I would say if you if you're not bald, just shave the head clean. Mm-hmm. Shave the and eyebrows. And just feel the difference. Feel the difference. File you're your gonna teeth feel down. something. Get tan. You get real tan. I did too. the uh, no beard filter. I haven't had been clean shaven <sighs> since last summer when I shaved my head and my beard. That was the worst I've ever by felt the way. about my about the movie trailer coming out. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've, I can't look at myself. I can't look. I can't see it. It's you look horrible. Like a sandshrew. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it is sandshrew vibes. You look like a military Man. sandshrew. Yeah, right. And if people don't know, this is the new Stavros movie that you're in. You're right. When does that come out? Is it is it in theaters? I don't know. Soon? I don't know what the hell's happening. There's a. Uh, oh, you want to come to the premiere of it next week or a couple weeks from now nate of course all right i'll be catering but, oh yeah jack will be catering doing <laughs> drone catering excited from to New see York. you there <laughs> yep drone, drone catering yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um what was like oh oh i just wanted to say sometimes we look at burdens as these heavy loads right but stop saying that <laughs> they, these are the heaviest loads I've ever seen in my life ever experienced ever taken but the um, biggest loads the I can't biggest, take any more loads on my back burden, 
Yeah, right. It's enough. I'm carrying loads. these big fat loads on fat. my back. <laughs> <laughs> Load is so funny. Grow okay. up. <clears throat> yeah, seriously, Sorry. grow up. But, yeah. he, but these burdens can actually be turned into another B word if you bullion. look at them right. No, not bullion cubes. <laughs> 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 bullion. Blessings. How'd you like to fill your mouth up with a bunch of bullion cubes? That's mm. torture. <laughs> to have to eat. Sweet. All right. Is there blessings. sweet yes, bullion? Blessings. You say blessings. I said blessings. Yeah. Every time you think you have a burden, look at it as as if it were a blessing, right? And that's the transmutation that we're talking about, right? So I'm gonna give you a, a, a scenario, Nate, and you got to turn this into a blessing. Okay. You get into a forty. You cause a forty car pileup on four hundred five, killing um, probably twenty men, twenty children, and <laughs> twenty and Dev women. Patel. And Dev Patel uh, is. <laughs> Dev Patel is, is left. also in the in the accident, but you survive. I already have a blessing. It, it just What's already in, in play. What's that? So I'm of course going to be going to jail for the rest of my life here. Well, where's the blessing come from? Service, because I'm going to be massaging all the prisoners in that fucking shit. I'm going to be <laughs> giving everybody massages and everyone's going to fucking love me, dude. I'm going to be the, it, it, can you imagine if you went into prison and mm-hmm. you're just the guy that could give crazy good massages? You're doing you're, tantric you're, massage for all the different uh, <laughs> gang leaders. You're uniting the white Aryan brotherhood. You're uniting the... <laughs> They're doing that like pregnant lady like yoga uh-huh. like shit where they're like behind <laughs> Lamaz. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, that would bring the pri- see see that would that is what I would call a blessing in disguise. Yeah. Alright, now give one to me, I'll turn it into a blessing. Okay. Um let's see here. You want fuck? Do you fucking want me to jump in, or are you just gonna rub yeah. your eye? Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I'm thinking. All right, okay. You have a sort of you. You have a foster care. Um, you're a foster care parent. Okay? okay. And you've been in because you get government credit for having a kid. Don't they pay you? I think to have one of these kids, and mm-hmm. it's kind of gotten out of control where you have like. You have like 10 foster kids and this is your only sort of financial Mm -hmm. way of living. And Mm -hmm. all the kids are just like, they don't listen to you. Your life is hell at this point. And you, but you're making a good amount of money. You're probably making, you know, 20 K each a year off of each of these kids from the government. All right. So that would seem like to me as a, large burden to be dealing with that life so how could you flip that into a blessing i so all right i'm already making 200k (laughs) off the kids (laughs) i think i would turn it i would get them into performing arts and we would become sort of a road show attraction go touring across the country (laughs) doing improv doing (laughs) <laughs> corporate corporate business uh conferences you know what i mean turn them into workers and they're not getting paid because they're under 18 you're not allowed to pay someone that's under 18 any money so you're getting so more I, money i would take it but what they're getting in exchange is extreme lessons from someone who's started just starting to actually pop off in entertainment in a crazy way <laughs> free basically it's important free classes. to learn extreme lessons not just regular <laughs> lessons <laughs> that comes through exposure okay, Jack, right away. you what? are diagnosed with a basically extreme radiation and it's not sure how, how it happened <laughs> but you were experienced <laughs> well they're fine they're, they found extreme radiation within you like where's it coming levels. from then well they don't know but <laughs> frankly, I wouldn't be surprised with the fucking bullshit I got cooking all over my fucking. Well, right. I think one of those, if you pop talk it, about it's, it. is pure radiation. But, right. um, and you now have 24 hours to live. 
I mean, oh, uh, that's uh, what? so that's three meals and some snacks. I like okay. that. I like that. Yeah, this is tough because my plan was whatever is going to happen. Well, I'll just write the screenplay, but mm-hmm. now I'm not even going to be fucking involved. So I guess could I do a nonviolent domestic terror event? That's what I thought too. I was kind of going there um, in my head, but Eric, this is your scenario, so okay. So what well, you, um, so you're allowed to do what you're technically allowed to do, whatever. But you keep in mind. Okay, this so I'm changing it from a burden. Okay, watch this. I'm changing it from a burden <laughs> to a blessing. Uh. Maybe I like eat something else that's gonna kill me in twelve hours, and then I go, I survive that. I go well. Now I've got twenty four. No, that's not right. Then, dude, that would just suck. If I was told that I have radiation sickness, I'm gonna die in twenty four hours. <laughs> How's that? How could that be a blessing? No, you're not thinking creatively. You're not thi- because you could a blessing because I wouldn't have to see what Trump turn what what I won't have to see Trump turn this country into a time lapse of a mcdonald's burger turning into mold essentially wow wow so yeah i mean it's a blessing it's a blessing to be free of course finally from the demons i mean that's a blessing it's a blessing to be mortal uh it's a it it would be okay okay wait, wait wait here's you know what i would take the time to just write down all the apologies that I've could possibly think people that don't even know that they could mm. get apologized from me. I would just say, Oh, I thought you meant apologies to you. Hey dude, I'm dying in 24 hours. You have 24 <laughs> hours to apologize to me for all that shit. You, you've been doing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no dude, it's the opposite. You are because giving then I'm going to, wow. I'm giving apologies so that I can then on the end say, PS rate me five stars in terms of God. Mm. Just say like extra, extra. Make sure the sky goes to heaven. Um, I don't know. I guess the truth is I don't. I, I don't. Uh, maybe it's because one. I don't see a. I don't see a problem with burdens. Is maybe where where I'm getting to. I don't wow. want to get rid is of my burdens. I don't want to shift my perspective. Them. What did I just? I say? think. I think anyone who gets to shuffle off this, how I call how I would call it, immortal coil. Anyone who gets to do that. That's a blessing to be bl- to be free from the curse of life, the curse and gift of life <laughs> at the same time. You see what is I'm death, saying? Death is the ultimate blessing. You're saying death is like I think death and don't anybody do anything rash. Just let it let it happen naturally. That's how God intended. That's why they say don't whatever in the Bible. This but is <laughs> anyone who gets to die a peaceful death is blessed, right? <laughs> I remember a couple episodes ago you were like. Please, I can't do this anymore. Watching British crime shows, like you're, <laughs> like it's you're so tortured. <laughs> I have nothing left to do. There's nothing. I can't left watch to do. another British crime TV show. <laughs> Can I say there is yeah. something about wearing a lime green shirt and a pair of jeans that makes me feel like this is what it was supposed to be. I'm supposed to be 6 a.m. showing up with all the other plumbers hearing what we're gonna do oh, today yeah getting yeah sent off uh-huh. in the van on the with, with my truck uh, do you have a pair yeah. of tims i do but i don't talk about them secret tims that you only wear when you're when you're throwing it down with your head the rave. backwards <laughs> <laughs> tims on no no socks <laughs> fully naked i'm going to my second apartment in bushwick Nobody knows about mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> with with seven roommates, mm-hmm. and the Tims are loose too. They're not tied. They're not tied up mm-hmm. at all. They're fucking loose. Nope. Damn, I was walking kind of silly today. <laughs> uh, I had my flip flops on, of course, to go get a nice little meal at the bar, and then on the walk home, my socks were really loose, but I had my flip flops on, and so they were sliding off my foot, and they were flopping all around like a. Guy wearing some pajamas in the 1920s. You went to a bar today? Uh, Tonight, I went to a bar. What the hell did you... Why did you go to... What? Did, where? Where? Where'd you go? On Myrtle, dude. Yeah. I went. I had my my 
amazing whiskey and coke on the plane as i always do psych i don't even drink on airports and then i got back home went to the bar and guess what i had man whiskey coke actually just a diet coke and a chicken caesar with fries that's Mm. that's the one jesus christ that's the fucking one that's the lock to my Mm -hmm. combination to the safe of that is my heart you know what i mean yeah, because that tastes uh, so good. That mm. Mm, diet coke, chicken Caesar, and a big French old fries bucket of fries. It doesn't get better than that. I'm not I'm kidding. Go you. Do it again. <coughs> I want to go. You do know that what again. I'm about to make for dinner after what? this? What? Whoopie burgers. You're making burgers on the yep. skillet. Are you gonna be cranking some music while you do that? Or are you doing it and moving in silence? Making you know what? Things? I wasn't. I wasn't thinking of putting on any music but do you have any musical suggestions that would pair well with you should cur- to with making put- burgers in an ikea uh skillet <laughs> <laughs> i think you have to put on some put on the felonious monk you know what i'm saying oh mm-hmm. yeah yep. a little bit of piano style jazz <laughs> <laughs> Take They're like off. extra well done. They're like smoking yeah. <laughs> up the entire <laughs> apartment. <laughs> warm, I'm getting warm reminded red wine. Uh, in the beginning of the pandemic when hours. I was. Have y'all ever cooked spaghetti in a microwave in a bowl of water? Um, <laughs> oh God, not in a. Uh, I think I've done that with ramen noodles, like when I was in college. But I did that with hard, right. real spaghetti. Ten minutes. That ain't and I right. broke the microwave. I did actually end up breaking that microwave but for two weeks in the beginning of the pandemic <laughs> there was no excuse for that that was not i did not uh that didn't make sense i've just been shocked to my core something has just occurred that's sort of throwing me here you found a purple carrot well, in the carrot bag that that's is normal. disturbing because I, I all right um no we had decided on getting korean food for dinner Okay, so she came and took my phone and ordered what I thought was going to be delicious Korean. Now I get my phone back, and what I'm seeing is that it's going to be Mediterranean food, dude. Okay, oh you're, okay. You you're, okay. you're okay. You're okay. You're okay. You're okay. No, let's go. It's let's just right. chill out. No, no, just no, relax. No, no, no. It's okay. That stuff's very I good think too, I need to man. End this shit early. No, no. I I'm going to call but, her and <laughs> just make sure she's okay and safe. Um, <laughs> Eric, <laughs> take the per- take the uh, Percocet that I gave you. Uh, <laughs> I, it's going to be okay. You're right. I need to just chill out, but I'm fucking level Damn. 10 I'm pissed. No, that'll Dude, be delicious. getting those Dune, little... Dune what are those? From Dune, Atwater. Oh, Dune is delicious. That shit's popping, so I'm not even upset. Did you get the fried chicken? It. I think so. I think I did mm. get some fried chicken. If she mm-hmm. has any sense, mm-hmm. she would have ordered that she has even a, an ounce of sense and i know she does a lot of it i got a dub sack <laughs> and you of and sense your, you and your girlfriend don't talk but she listens to this podcast and you try to communicate <laughs> yeah. with her passive aggressively yeah. through the podcast yeah exactly <laughs> wow i miss you guys i just met nate i know i saw you, i saw you last night but i'm missing you guys right now not kidding. oh man i'm wow. so excited yeah. for what's to come I'm really excited to come to town. I know Eric, you'll be very busy, but Nate, well, you know, let's work out every gonna, day. You know, my mom's going to be in town too. Oh, let's have some fun. Are you kidding me? Maybe you you should come to come to work with me one day. I'll bring my resume. Okay, <laughs> good, dude. Can I stay on your guys' couches? Yeah. Or should I throw of it back? Or throw it back on the spend some the money. line. No, no, stay on the couch. No. Nope. Ha ha, I asked stay you on the air, so you have to couch. say yes, or everyone's going to think you're a fucking piece of shit. That's the secret. <laughs> Do it in public, folks. <laughs> so um, then... Um, uh, I mean, I guess we should start getting into it. I guess we should start yeah. getting into what gave us joy. I, I think you're right. Well, I already... I already said this but um yeah i'm just really i'm really hungry right now and all i could think about is making a fucking cheeseburger mm. and so wait that's so what's giving me joy walk right us now. through the ingredients that you have 
and walk us through what that's going to be plated like. <laughs> well, I have a, a, a butter lettuce. I'm doing like, you know, no bun. I know that's taboo, but I'm just doing a lettuce wrap. Bunless? Nate, <laughs> why, man? Nah, 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 nah. I'm nah, doing the nah, bunless. Nah. Damn. I'm doing bunless. Damn. I don't care about the bun, honestly. I, it's just not that. It's not about that for me. So and I don't even care about the beef. lettuce. <laughs> well, I have these patties from. Uh, they're already pre-made, uh, not pre-cooked. Smash from Trader Joe's, and we're gonna put some sharp cheddar cheese on them. We're mm. gonna cut mm-hmm. up some onions. Maybe should I put it in the burger? You know, while I'm cooking it, maybe some onion what? to make it. Up to no, you. no, just well, you could caramelize them on the side, or you could put them on raw. It's up to you. It's up to you. You're saying like that insert the crunch. onion, insert the onions into the p- burger patty. I guess I would have to re kind of like mush up the meat yeah. and then put. I it guess in I've the never experienced something the, that I know of. I've never experienced a. Uh, oh, that's the shit. Inserted dude. onions. Yeah. Mm. I mean, chop up some onions, some garlic. Mm. Yeah, it gives it a lot of flavor. <laughs> So I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to improvise, as I always do in the kitchen. And, Are you guys um, going to watch something while you eat, or is it a silent the Silence. Meal? No talking. <laughs> Direct eye contact with every bite. Never look at the food. That's how you... That's that's called and, for, forming intimacy with your partner. Oh, yeah. Silent. Silent bonding. Mm-hmm. Nate. So, yeah. Synchronicity, man. Do you know that I've been doing burgers in the pan lately? <laughs> I don't, but it doesn't surprise me that we're connected. I'm not going to write you a love song because <laughs> you asked for it. Is that yours? Your your burger? I made this burger. Double cheese. Oh, oh. shiznit. That's, that's good. I'd say burgers, it's similar to pizza in that. Or maybe actually, like a one dollar burger, the odds of it being fucking amazing are still it's still very high. But oddly enough, as you totally. get more and more expensive on a burger, the more it's like that it might just have nothing but Gruyere and mustard on it, and you're thinking worst tier Dude. burgers. I'm gonna tell you right now are nineteen dollars. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. You either want to get the McDonald's eight dollar Big Mac, or you want to mm. get a eight dollars. Or like a thirteen dollar burger that's dangerous. You know what I'm saying? Fourteen dollar burger that's dangerous. But once you twenty six dollar burger, that could be hitting just about right. The Red Hook Tavern style. You know what I mean? Uh, uh mm, yeah. that one's fucking uh, good. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'll uh, do this joy tactics thing. Uh oh my god. So we've been doing Rap World, that movie we did in Baltimore for the Baltimore Movie and Film Style Festival, uh, something like that, and in Minneapolis as well. But when we were in Baltimore, guess what? Celebrity sighting. Shout out Ian Michael Glassart. We went and got dinner with the ketchup plates. He lives in Minneapolis? No, this is in Baltimore. He lives uh, literally hardly... Robert, good to see you. Oh, I'm, I know Robert. Robert. Robert's looking handsome. Oh, he's looking amazing. This was Everyone's a very, looking handsome in there. That's, this was no a hyper-enjoyable meal. Hyper-enjoyability. Uh, damn. It was just tapping back in. Uh, it's fun to talk to these people and to drive around in the car and Ian did mm-hmm. something I don't want to put him on blast but he did something that <laughs> this is something that I want to say this with complete respect and love because it is something that I love about him more than anything is sometimes when I in- introduce him to somebody there was like some people that we know just through the comedy scene in Brooklyn <laughs> and I was like introducing them hey what's up everybody these are my high school friends robert and Ian. and i think he was like blowing out uh, you know some weed smoke or something didn't want to like be weird but he was kind of they're like hey nice to meet you and he was kind of like this yeah man <laughs> <laughs> and that is one of my favorite that stuff makes me so fucking happy 
yeah. just uh, being around friends that make me really fucking laugh in a way that exits the realm of reality. Dude, laughing. Here's the thing, too. When you're sometimes you're like, oh, I think my I think I'm OK with this new group of people. It's all right. I guess it's kind of social and fun. Um, but then you go hang out with your real friends and you get that real laughter. Mm, that's when you know you've hit the good stuff. You yeah. know what I'm saying? When you start driving into the, uh, there was, there was like a three lane road going one way, three lanes going the other way. We drove and started going the wrong way down a three lane kind of mini, mini little main road. Mm-hmm. Hit the donut. Yeah. That's laughing. when you're laughing and enjoying that. God, good laugh. All right, my joy, I think, is just what Nate described is that night. We haven't really had that many people, like, a group over. It was kind of impromptu, but it's so, just standing around a kitchen island, drinking. Are you kidding me? Listening to music? Are you kidding me? Snacks, foods on the way? Uh, Laughing? Getting all fucked up? There's, I mean, to a point, being still responsible? (laughs) <laughs> it's the, it's the best uh, it's the best feeling in the world. That show me a man or woman who has that, and you're showing me a king, but with many riches. So that's been burdens, guys. We did it and uh, had a great time doing this podcast with you guys tonight. And I look forward to the next one. As do I. Well, thank you all for rocking with us. And you know, if you've been enjoying these free episodes. Why don't you go ahead and go to patreon.com slash joy tactics no, it, it, for five dollars a month? Anymore, you like, can please, have a, like I, I just want to speak directly to the to the couple of people I know you're listening right now. You've just been riding with the free ones for the past couple of years. Times t- enough. All right, get on the Patreon right now. It's five bucks a month. Okay, you're gonna get a backlog of about 80 to 100 bonus episodes that you can just listen to whenever you right. want at your leisure. Lizard. By the way, in. this week, I'm doing a belly button reveal. Oh, shit. I've been doing oh. very specific On style the exercises. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow. So, yeah, All right. we post crazy shit on there. So, um, tap in. Love you guys. Peace. Respect your Much elders. love. Later. Donate. Exercise. Appreciate it. Well... That concludes another incredible fucking episode of Joy Tactics. Head over to patreon.com slash joy tactics to unlock exclusive weekly bonus episodes. And make sure to follow us on social media where we post fire TikToks and hilarious shit like that. And if you loved the shit you just listened to make sure to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. Thanks for listening and remember, we are shaped by our thoughts, we become what we think. When the mind is pure, joy follows like a shadow that never leaves.